culture is To our lovably hateful former overlords in Foxboro, it's been a relatively uneventful, if weird, offseason. It's not what they did, but what they didn't do. They refused to franchise tag JC Jackson, allowing one of your better defenders to secure a bag elsewhere? Have you grown soft, Bill? You can try to do what you do with coaches by bringing back Trent Brown and an ace Malcolm Butler to torment Seattle more. It means nothing, Bill. NOTHING! The defense is going through a bit of flux, but nothing else is coming in. I get it, they did blow their load pretty hard last offseason. The key for the Patriots has always been in Mac Jones. Nothing will stop them from getting back to the Super Bowl. Except perhaps Cap needs and aging players. The New England Patriots select Cole Strange, guard Chattanooga. A guard out of Chattanooga wasn't expected to go anywhere near this position. If you had watched a bunch of first round mock drafts, you'd think this guy was some Madden generated player with normal development. But to anyone who knows the Patriots, it's a vintage Bill Belichick pick. A guy who fills a need, fits the team's scheme fit, and will somehow be a pro bowler despite the colossal reach. We shouldn't question the hoodie. For whatever reason, it will somehow work out. When a team tries to keep the glory days alive, several outcomes are possible. First, they continue their winning ways. If Mac Jones progresses from his strong rookie campaign, if a defense with a bunch of leaving and moving parts can mesh into a strong unit, if Devontae Parker can stay healthy enough to fulfill his potential, maybe they can return to being insufferable fucks. The other outcome? Incredible denial that the window is slammed shut and is drifting into the abyss. New blood to call plays on offense? That's some poppycock right there. The Pats need are two absolute hacks whose self-exaggerated genius rivals every 16-year-old know it all. A competition between Detroit's most hated pencil pusher and QB sneaks near your own goal line on a third and nine. With an O-line without Dante Scarniccia to coach it. Mac Jones is getting the Justin Fields experience, isn't he? Someone get Belichick out of the film room so we can realize the situation. The AFC, just like last season, is going to be a bloodbath. You can make the argument for nearly every team to be able to reach the promised land of the playoffs. And as a fan of the game, you can't ask for much more. The AFC East is pretty cut and dry, though. Buffalo will be taking that division with ease. The AFC North will go to Baltimore, considering that they're finally healthy and able to field a respectable team should do wonders for them. To me, the AFC South is a coin flip between Indy and Tennessee, and I'm going to err on the side of the Titans for the time being. It's very close, though, just like the AFC West. Every team has a shot at winning the division. And for my sake, I'm going to go bold and pick the Broncos. I know, insane, but they actually have a QB and hopefully non-shitty play calling. That's all they needed. And as for the wild cards, it's a tough call, but I'm going to go with Kansas City, the Chargers, and the Bengals. I personally can't wait to see how wrong I am in these predictions, as always. Maybe they'll be as slow to develop as my vid schedule. Why would you bother to have hope for New England this week? Do you not realize they're in Miami? You know, their version of instant death? Charlie Brown has a better chance of kicking the football than the Patriots winning in Miami. For New England's offensive game plan, they can't even run to the ball. They keep tripping over themselves. Miami's defense looked as potent as it did in 2020. That's how bad the Patricia Judge domination was. They could do nothing. As long as the Dolphins bothered to show up, they would have won this game. Fortunately for them, they did. Once again, New England. Nobody's gonna feel bad if you suck this year. The rest of your division is going to feast on your maggot-infested carcass. This week might have merely been an appetizer. Three of the worst offensive minds in the NFL today taking a bludgeon to anything resembling modern football. This is the kind of game that wouldn't be won, but lost by unforced errors in shit play calling. Today, like most matchups between these two in recent history, the Patriots live rent-free on several floors of the Highmark building. One thing became very clear to us all again. TJ Watt is the pass rush for the Steelers. Without him, it's non-existent. If you combine this with Nelson Aguilar mossing someone like he's one of his critics, and Gunnar Olszewski revealing himself as a double agent, New England escapes a battle between two fighters decades past their prime. The Steelers are embracing Matt Canada's namesake. Watered down, laughable, and a mockery of anything resembling an offense. To be frank, they're still lucky. 
They should be 0-2. If Baltimore loses this game, John Harbaugh should be chucked into the Atlantic like he's tea imported from the British Empire. After last week's colossal choke, there will be no excuses for the Ravens if they lose here. I know New England is one of their oldest rivals and it's in Foxborough. We don't care. This team has Super Bowl aspirations. With Lamar Jackson turning into a man possessed by football demons eternal, he will stop at nothing to get what he wants in the end. The tug-of-war for supremacy on Foxborough was very real until the third quarter. Someone blinked. This time it was the Patriots that self-destructed offensively. Not for the reasons you'd expect, but due to painful fumbles and Mac Jones regressing thanks to being led by a group of clowns. Rest easy, John. They won't chuck you into the Atlantic until you get back to the Inner Harbor. The Patriots, well, this does suck, but it's not the worst-case scenario for you guys. Okay, now it is. Brian Hoyer's fifth stint as Pat's QB is about to begin. The war between Darth Belichick and fallen Jedi Rogers has lost its luster over the years. Young apprentice Mac Jones is going to be out of this match. So we begin yet another tenure of the Madden-generated Brian Hoyer at QB for the Patriots. At least that was the case until Hoyer was knocked out with injury. Thus, their new sacrificial lamb is... Uh, hold up, I actually have to look this up. Bailey Zappi! Come on down and please, for the love of God, don't suck. That dubious honor would go to Aaron Rodgers. He looks like shit. Completely missing his throws, throwing like Devontae Adams will be somewhere in the vicinity of the throw and ready to chuck his entire team under the bus for shit that's his own damn fault. Green Bay is imitating a team to the east of them. They are playing down to competition. The fortunate thing for them is that the Patriots are starting a third-string quarterback, and they've limited the already limited offense for him as a result. Even then, both teams are stunningly moving the football. Points are being scored. Tied at 24, all of Lambeau is undergoing a combination of heavy drinking and angina. Romeo Dobbs had a chance at a brilliant touchdown, but he dropped it on contact with the ground. Aaron Rodgers will have him killed in a few days. These teams must settle for overtime in the grueling slog of it all. The Packers get first shot. They fail. The Patriots can respond in kind. And they do with a three and out. Green Bay finally realizes that they have to win this game to stay ahead in the NFC North. They don't want to be tied with the Bears, do they? It's an ending as predictable as the Lambeau Leap. Rodgers manages to throw with precision and Mason Crosby lines up to win the game. For the win from 31, Crosby right down the middle. Well done, boy. You beat a wither team playing their third string quarterback. Give yourselves a nice pat on the ass and run as fast as you can out of the building. Pat Patriot has made his triumphant return to the 50 yard line. Unlike the shitty teams that his likeness donned, New England took us back to 2008. Detroit looked like an amateur outfit with how out of sorts they were. So much for the best offense in the league. So much for a team that fights with everything they have. My only guess is that Matt Patricia laid a hex on the team before he left. They must play like shit against the Pats no matter what. And this was a team starting Bailey goddamn Zappi at QB. And they also did nothing to stop Ramondre Stevenson. Absolute self-destruction at all 22 positions. Shut up by the withered husk of the evil empire. Perhaps next week Dan Campbell will pick up coaching for dummies. Dude is likable, but does he even know how to adjust a game plan? The hoodie never shows mercy to the homeland that scorned him. It may have been years since the event. It may not even be the same damn team, he does not care. The Browns must suffer for their transgressions. Ramondre Stevenson will lead the way. And his Mac Jones cloning machine is working wonders for his offense. He will call this quarterback... Bailey Zappi, a man who was as composed and efficient as a seasoned veteran against Cleveland. In Belichick's presence, the Browns will look like amateurs. Jacoby Brissett will solidify his role as a backup and the entirety of the city still wants Joe Woods drawn and quartered. All the Browns have to do is keep around 500 for when Deshaun comes back and they're still having trouble doing it. Nothing but embarrassing loss after embarrassing no, no, loss no. to complement the risk. As Cleveland is burned to the ground, Belichick also receives another trinket for his collection. Tying George Hallis for the second most wins in NFL history. The crowd's getting restless, Bill. Trickery has deceived them into thinking Bailey Zappi is the future. Mac Jones is flailing around aimlessly, unable to do a damn thing. 
Losing to the lowly bears is an unacceptable fate. With his back against the wall, Bill takes a swig of his Parcel sweat jar and decides to cater to the crowd. Bailey Zappi is here to save the Patriots. Hear the roar of the crowd as he manages to move the football with ease. The swelling of pride from Boston can be heard as the rest of America groans in unison. We all know this could be a breakthrough game for Justin Fields. Subvert your expectations, motherfuckers. It's time to bear down in Gillette. This is easily the best performance of Fields' career. I don't know if that says more about him or the Pats defense. The Chicago Bears scored over 30 points in an actual football game. It's like Haley's Comet, this only happens once every 70 years. Kind of like New England being outright humiliated at home. Good work, Patriots. You have a quarterback controversy on your hands and you have problems to deal with no matter who you pick. Have the fans been zapped yet? What do you get when you have two teams that feature no offense whatsoever? You get Bill Belichick still managing to find a way to troll the Jets. It's a testament to the horrors of the 2021 quarterback no, no, no. class. Mac Jones has greatly regressed into a man who can barely throw a game, no. let alone a football. Zach Wilson, on the other hand? Dude is Patrick Mahomes if he had no football savvy whatsoever. Terrible throw after terrible throw, or you wonder how the hell this guy was a second overall pick. We were all waiting for the three-pick game from Wilson this year. This was it. Even their defense no. was getting cucked by New England. Oh, did you have a big touchdown on an interception of Mac Jones? Nothing for you! Oh, that's a bad boy. I think that's roughing the passer on the defense. Even in a season where the Jets seem to be turning the corner, they can't escape their humiliation fetish to the Patriots. Don't repress your feelings, Jets. You secretly no. like the boot on your face. You want more of it. Bill Belichick loves him some fresh meat at the quarterback position. Sam Ellinger, I have good news. Well, no. not good news, but dying on the field is an honor. Not enough derision is given to the Colts no. offensive line. It went from competent to shit faster than most 40 times at the combine. Ellinger sucked, but can he really be blamed no, no, when he has no, no time to no, throw? No. Sam got sacked nine goddamn no. times. You can't win like that. New England may have flaws, but the hoodie knows how to suck in no. his soul out at Foxborough. I don't know if he even needed to. Colts are withered and hollow as it is to begin with. Jim Irsay will try to blame anything he can for his team's failure. He fails to understand the place he needs to start looking no. is a mirror. Anyone who was at this game should immediately be inoculated with the Vikings-Bills thriller that occurred last week. This contest single-handedly set team offense back at least a century. When Zach Wilson collides with the bastard offense of Patricia and Judge, only horrors await. What we get is one of the games of our time. A complete insult to the very being of the sport itself. The Jets can lead the AFC East with a win. That alone proves how bullshit this season has been. People will say this year is a resurgence of defense. I will immediately counter with this match, for it's only worthy of being buried alive. I considered separating this video into a greatest game, but do we really want that? There's nothing to go off here besides Kevin Harlan dying in the broadcast booth. We're tied at fucking three deep into the fourth with nothing but punts galore and a few missed field goals. This isn't even the fun kind of awful game, it's just awful. A Friedberg and Seltzer movie played out on a football field. Worse enough, we will have to be tortured with overtime. From the 16-yard line, Marcus Jones. Got a block from Schooler. Here he goes! He's gonna try to beat the putter! He does! He's gone! And that is a touchdown! I think even the football gods had enough. There were at least three blocks in the back in this return, but no one wanted this shit to continue. Therefore, the Jets lose and continue fulfilling the prophecy of the coin. I'm legitimately shocked that both of these teams managed to score more than 13 points apiece in this one. With how great the Pats' defense and how awful the Pats' offense is, it's the real Minneapolis miracle. The other miracle will be Mac Jones getting real offensive minds to help him develop. The Vikings have long enjoyed their opponents being helped by a man named Patricia, and he did it again. Well, in spite of Mac Jones making some nice throws. All you need to counter that is Justin Jefferson becoming a demigod. It's been happening nearly every week this season, so that's fine enough. However, New England and ref ball shenanigans are a common occurrence. 
This time there'd be a twist. They're the victims of it. Begin another episode of What the Fuck is a Catch? Ball crossing the plane, making a football move, and having the hand underneath the ball as it hits the ground? Not a catch. Thanks to the losing possession of the ball? I thought they changed that stipulation in 2018. How's it feel, New England? Jesse James caught that ball and you know it! Fuck you, 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 fuck This forces New England to kick a field goal instead. I would say it wouldn't have a major impact, but that would imply they have competent offensive minds. They don't. The Patriots will now be mourning this man who ran into the kicker. Let's say he'll be leaving his home and never coming back. The Vikings counter and proceed to finish the job. It blesses Minnesota with the greatest midseason honor anyone can bestow. A return to a positive point differential on the year. Pats fans, we would feel bad, but we really don't. There comes a time where you've been in a situation for so long, you stop giving a shit about results. The more I see the New England Patriots, the more I believe Bill Belichick is simply choosing to troll us all. You can't look me in the eyes and say that Matt Patricia and Joe Judge can lead any sort of offense. I feel like the hoodie's headset isn't connected to the team booth, but to the set of impractical jokers. Everyone has a good old time as Buffalo methodically dissects not only the Patriots' defense, but Gillette Stadium as a whole. No wonder why Boston is pissed. I see more life out of Al Michaels broadcasting games these days. The Bills dominated this affair like they've dominated the rivalry as of late. Doesn't it suck when the shoe's on the other foot, Pats fans? Oh, poor Mac Jones. Someday you'll be rescued from this offensive hell. It's been a while since we had one of these. Let's get it started with a bag. Or shall I say a crack? Kyler Murray, congratulations. Your season's been a nightmare and it's only going to get worse. He was merely the appetizer. The insatiable grass in Arizona claimed many bodies today. However, that wasn't enough for the gods' bloodlust. What they really wanted was the Cardinals franchise as a whole. Witnessing them in this decrepit state, chucking Colt McCoy with a playbook built no, around no, Kyler no. just proved that they are useless. The franchise is literally dead. Devoid of any hope, motivation, hunger, or logic whatsoever. This isn't even slander. The whole team is simply going through the motions to cash a paycheck. New England, shitty offense and all put up 20 unanswered points against them. It's pretty easy to do when you're up against a team as poorly coached as Arizona is. The Pats look like they were back in their dynasty days. All that to get back to a playoff spot. Pretty impressive when only one side of the ball works. I'd like to close with a joke. Five-year extensions for Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury. The playoff push is reaching its final stages. Only one spot has been clinched by Philadelphia, but four weeks remain. In the AFC, it's wide open. Buffalo currently has number one seed, but Kansas City is close behind, if only because of a head-to-head -head loss with the Bills. Baltimore currently has the AFC North lead in the third spot, and Tennessee has a loosening grip of the Caboose division in the AFC South. Wild cards are currently held by Cincinnati, Miami, and the Patriots. But the Chargers and Jets are tied with New England at seven and six. A few other teams are five and eight, but they're long shots at this point. The picture will become clearer as time goes on. And as we all know, there's only one rule to follow. Don't get eliminated! Master versus Apprentice. This time, the Apprentice is a fail son who was given a third chance because everyone still wants to skin the Patriots alive. Be amazed at how badly the Raiders keep squandering the endless chances they have. Witness the New England Patriots suddenly becoming a poorly coached shitpile surrounded by hacks and yes-men. See this multi-score lead Las Vegas gets early in the game? Watch it vanish in the blink of an eye. Dead serious, they've done this four times this season. Maybe more, I forget. That's how commonplace it's been for the Raiders. So frustrating that this regime will have you begging for Gruden. How do you blow that lead? Why, do it in game-changing fashion with a great run by Ramondre Stevenson. All seems lost, but it's here where the hoodie's heart grew three sizes. He always allows his underlings to get the best of him in the regular season. It's a tradition unlike any other, and it continues here. Comebacks in the final minute of play are so predictable it's all but routine. Guess what happens here? Car! 
End zone! It is pulled! That's what we call a dark hit. Sure, he might have looked out of bounds on more than a few camera angles, but that rule is one even the NFL finds stupid. Give him the damn touchdown due to inconclusive evidence. Right, Jan. Yeah. The Shield loves them a good script, but just wait until overtime. Mac Hollins out on defense. He's all the way back. As uh, Stevenson is anyone gonna is inside the 30, flips it back. Stanford band nowhere in sight. Uh oh, it's the goal. Uh oh, oh no! Oh wow! Incredible! Chandler Jones takes it in and wins the game for the Raiders. Excuse me. What? The fuck? What the fuck? What the actual fuck? I am having an aneurysm even trying to comprehend what this even was. Ramondre has a chance to speed back the edge, so he laterals it back to a player who runs backwards 10 yards, and then eats the ball back another 10 yards to a defender. There was no need to do this. You were tied. You had overtime. Mac Jones got shut like a toy chest for literally no reason. America as a whole lost entire sections of the collective cerebrum watching this play. We talk about cancel culture. The Patriots should be canceled for offending our senses of common logic and decency. This is the kind of shit that has people believe the league is manufactured for ratings. Congratulations, Patriots. You have your answer to the butt fumble. Imagine giving the Raiders a fluke win of all teams. You maniac! You blew it up! Damn you! God damn you all to hell! We've had quite a lot of teams reach playoff land this week, didn't we? It doesn't mean we're anywhere close to settling how things will shake out. The AFC has many spots open to claim. Only Buffalo and Kansas City have clinched, and the Bills still have number one seed. Cincinnati overtakes Baltimore for the AFC North lead, as Ravens fans wonder why they keep squandering chances. Tennessee is far past that point. They've lost four straight and are in an existential state of dread. And for good reason. Baltimore is sole possession of the first wildcard spot with nine wins, but it's probably a disappointment to them. Same as Miami, who falls behind the Chargers for the second wildcard spot thanks to losing their matchup with them earlier in the year. The Jets and Patriots both with back-breaking losses of the first teams out with seven wins. They should be careful. There are a ton of teams with six wins. Including Jacksonville, who's only a game back of their division lead. This is gonna be quite fucky, isn't it? Everyone left, you know what to say. Don't get Imagine a timeline where the New England Patriots are a poorly coached team that's garbage at situational football. It may be sacrilege to say under the hoodie, but they might be there. I respect what he's done, but surrounding himself with worthless hacks as assistants doesn't help. Unsurprisingly, against the Bengals, there will be further hell to pay. Against themselves, as always. It's come to a point where bringing Bill O'Brien back will be celebrated like General MacArthur in New York City. At least he's proven he can move the ball down the field. The god-awful offensive attack will confirm it. When it's 22 to nothing at halftime with no momentum to speak of, Things are all but over. However, the hoodie still has a few tricks up his sleeve, mainly casting a sleep spell on the opposition from the sidelines. It seems most improbable considering their disorganization, but New England is somehow bamboozling their way to a comeback. Cincinnati keeps making an endless cavalcade of mistakes, and it allows Foxborough to think they have a chance. The offense is somehow scoring points, which is a rarity in the post-Brady age to be only down by four. How do you keep the madness coming? By a convenient fumble by Cincy. The bullshit is very real today. Marching down to the goal line late, they may save their season after all. Hand off. Stevenson. Stonewall. And Stevenson lost the football! Cincinnati claims they've got it, and they do! Ramondre. The Pats had the win all but within their grasp for a second straight game. Don't whine to me about forward progress, you boys didn't deserve to win. The Bengals did their best to bungle, but in the end, New England chose to pray at the altar of Scorigami. Ramondre Stevenson should learn how to say Lol Cow of the Week in Chinese. After these past few weeks, Belichick might exile him there for eternity. Cincy, here's your playoff berth. Now 
run before we change our mind. With a few big losses this week, the NFL playoff picture has become a mosh pit, as has been written for Time Eternal. The AFC North is still neck and neck between Baltimore and Cincinnati. Guess who plays each other in Week 18? That contest will more than likely be for the division title. In the AFC South, same scenario. Tennessee has fallen apart so badly that Jacksonville now holds the division lead. No matter what happens next week, their matchup is guaranteed to be for the right to advance as division leader. There are no changes in the first four seeds, but Buffalo can clinch number one seed if a few things go their way next week. In the wildcards, we know either Baltimore or Cincy will get one, and the Chargers just clinched another. But with Miami in freefall, the seventh seed is now murky. The Jets and Patriots, despite being awful as of late, still have a fighting chance. The Titans and Jags can still technically be wild cards, but their best shot of making it is winning their division. Pittsburgh and Las Vegas are clinging on for dear life, and we'll need many miracles to make it. Don't get Tua Nan is in shambles. Their almighty leader is out yet again, possibly for the rest of the year due to what is likely his third concussion of the season. He may have been struggling as of late, but when the backup option is Teddy Bridgewater, you may as well wave the white flag of submission to anyone you face. This includes, conveniently, New England. Coming off several horrifyingly bad losses where they ran themselves into visible spike traps. The fortunate thing for the Patriots is that their self-destruction tracker maxed out over the past few weeks. So good news for them, it's Miami that continues their relentless downward spiral. And worst of all, like most of the losses in this streak, they do it to themselves. Mostly by means of uninspired offense and a defense that's been more than suspect on many an occasion. They trusted the monkey's paw and now they must pay the price for their wishes. You wanted a great quarterback and receivers to go with him? You can have them. But the QBs are going to be injured. Teddy Bridgewater shattered his glass throwing hand, which forced him out of the game for Greenhorn Skylar Thompson. No success will be had. So not only has Miami lost their fifth straight in hilariously embarrassing fashion, they no longer control their own destiny. They need New England to lose next week to have any hope. But do you seriously trust the Dolphins to even take care of their own business? I can't even trust them to wipe after they take a shit anymore. Thanks to the no contest ruling, there will be a few wrinkles. If the Bills and Chiefs make it to the AFC Championship game, it will be played on a neutral site. This will occur if both the Bills and Chiefs win or tie or they both lose in the Ravens' winner tie. If the Chiefs and Bengals reach the AFC Championship and the Bengals won in Week 18, it will be played on a neutral site. As for the AFC North title, if the Bengals lose to the Ravens, home field advantage will be decided by a coin toss. The premise for both is simple. Win and in, loser goes home. They put the game on Saturday night, though. Strange. The seventh seed is an abomination that should not exist. All of these teams will be cannon fodder for the Bills in the wild card. But the NFL likes money. So we get this scenario. The Patriots are winning dead. The Dolphins need a win and a Pats loss. The Steelers can bullshit to another playoff berth with a win and New England and Miami losses. On to Buffalo, where New England controls their own destiny. This is your time. You'd like to keep us updated. Yeah, we'll keep everybody posted on Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Miami and the Jets were underway as New England decided to defer after winning the toss. And here's Hines on the run back, breaking a tackle and taking it past midfield. And down the sideline he goes. This is storybook. Let this play be the rallying cry for Damar Hamlin. He may still be in critical condition in the hospital, but his spirit will charge the entirety of that stadium all game long. New England, it was nice knowing you, but there was no way the NFL was going to allow you to win this game in these circumstances. You've already had your glory. Much better to have a storybook situation play out in real time. Did you seriously expect Roger Goodell in person to watch to allow the Patriots to have anything good happen? Of course not. Two touchdowns on kickoff returns by Naheem Hines. That's all you need to know. This day was for the Bills and it was one that was as predictable as three little pigs. Two of those pigs happened to run the offense of the Patriots. They build their houses with ineptitude and twigs. Mac Jones is being held hostage as he throws pick after pick. New England must bow out. This is for DeMar. The rest of the NFL's been waiting to say this for a long time, Pats fans. Welcome to hell.
2022 was a terrible year for team offense in the NFL, and New England was the poster child of it. Bill Belichick apparently watched endless film from the 1940s over the offseason. During this binge, he came to an epiphany. Instead of putting competent people in charge of my offense, why not get two stooges who have no experience control it? Something everyone saw coming from a mile away. Matt Patricia and Joe Judge ran a unit so offensive that the SPLC would call it a hate group, running into themselves featuring their main formation of Mac Jones rotting away under center. Fans clamoring for Bailey Zappi at every turn. Predictably massive regression. And any winning was done only if the defense could move mountains. To no one's surprise, Patricia's been relegated to the back closet. Hopefully for good. In an effort to maintain the cronyism on display in Hoodie Land, Bill O'Brien is back in the saddle. The sad thing is that it's a massive upgrade over what they had. Anything better than what happened against the Raiders. In one play, they brought joy to everyone that had been under their heel for decades. It still baffles the mind. They simply kneeled the ball and took this to overtime, they probably win and make the playoffs. Do I laugh or do I laugh harder?